Welcome to Maths with Bob. Today we're looking at solving trig equations using what's called the T results. And the T results are just basically a substitution uh, for a trig expression in, uh, in finding, I guess, if you like, in terms of T, like sine x and cos x, expressing them in terms of uh, this uh, new uh, T. Now, T is actually tan theta on 2, actually, and we can quite easily get these results, which you can see here. These are the results. Uh, here, I'll just try and enlarge them if I can. Here we go. Just have a quick look. Okay, these results you can see are basically well uh, coming from the two theta results, but the sine theta is actually um, equal to uh, two t on one plus t squared. Cos of theta is equal to one minus t squared on one plus t squared, and tan of theta equals two t on one minus t squared, where theta is obviously the angle. In this case, our x is our angle, so we're going to just replace uh, sine x with that 2t on 1 plus t squared, etc. So let's actually go through and see how we actually solve a trig equation um, uh, using what's called the t results. So we did before use what's called the, um, uh, the uh, what was it, the auxiliary angle method. Yes, we actually used it before. Okay, okay so let's actually shrink this. Okay, okay, so what are we going to do? Well, we're going to first up uh, replace the sine x. Okay, so let's actually just go through this. So we have 2, lots of, now sine x, uh, its t result was 2t on uh, 1 plus t squared. Okay, uh, that's obviously plus 3 lots of the cos result, uh, 1 minus t squared on 1 plus t squared. Now that's just equal to, you can see here, 2. Now, uh, we multiply by 1 plus t squared, we'll end up getting, what, uh, 4t here. Uh, we'll end up getting, like, uh, 3 minus 3t three squared. Okay, 3 lots of 1 minus t squared uh, is equal to 2 lots of uh, 1 plus t squared, uh, 2 plus 2t two squared. Uh, now, what we normally do is form the quadratic, put it all over one side. Uh, what's it going to give us? Uh, 5t squared. Um, now that's we put all the t's over the other side. Okay, well it's only one, so it's actually uh, what's that? Minus yes, minus four t squared uh, will be minus. Okay, when we move the plus four t across to the other side, it will just be minus four t, and we move the three across. Okay, minus one equals zero. Okay, so we just need to now uh, factor this. Um, we can just quickly do a cross method here. Five uh, t t, okay, uh, the factors are 5t squared down the left and the right, the factors are minus 1, well it's going to be 1 and 1, now which one's going to be minus, okay, so we need a minus 4, so it's going to be, if we make a minus 5 and an add a 1, that should be fine, so we can see here it's just going to be factored to 5t plus 1, uh, now if we couldn't factor it, we would have to obviously use the quadratic formula, or quadratic equation, the formula for uh, solving a quadratic equation, Okay, which is called the quadratic formula, x equals minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, that one. Okay, uh, so here we have, look, equals 0. Now, okay, so what are we going to do now? Well, obviously, uh, we can just, we know straight away that t must equal, what, minus a fifth and 1. Okay, so let's actually just uh, write out the solutions now. Okay, we can see that, uh, obviously, uh, t is equal to, what, minus 1 fifth or 1. Now, while I'm on this, uh, we always would check, uh, you notice I've got there in the little uh, summary box up the top there, on the top right-hand corner, always check the solution theta equals pi. Okay, so when we actually, uh, we can either check at the beginning or at the end, uh, just to make sure that uh, we didn't miss that solution. Okay, because as you know, theta on 2, when theta is actually pi, would be undefined. And this is why we always have to watch this with the t results. We always have to, if you like, substitute in uh, the value, f well, the angle value of pi, just to make sure that we didn't miss it. So we have the, these values for t at the moment. So, and you know that basically uh, tan uh, theta on 2, obviously, is equal to minus 1 fifth. Uh, this gives us what theta on 2 equals uh, shift tan of minus 1 fifth. Okay, uh, and we also know that uh, tan theta on 2 is equal to 1. Uh, therefore, theta on 2 is equal to uh, shift 10 of 1. Now, uh, okay, 
So we know that's pi and 4. But uh, we're going to now write out the general solutions. Now, notice there is no domain restriction on this. So it just says solve this trig equation. Uh, and uh, basically, we're going to uh, use the T results, as you can see. Uh, the, the, the domain restriction being not non-existent, if you like, basically means we have an infinite number of solutions. Uh, we then would then now drop into what's called the general solutions of these. And uh, so what are the general solutions for tan? Well, you might remember they were just quite simply uh, n pi plus the angle, so you always went forward. So basically, our solutions, our general solutions would be uh, theta run 2, uh, we'll, we can double everything in a minute, uh, so it would be going to be n pi plus this angle tan to the minus 1 of minus 1 fifth, okay, uh, and then also over here uh, we have a, another section of solutions which give us what, n pi, okay, plus tan to the minus 1 of 1. Now, Okay, these are our theta on two solutions, so we would then, then double everything. So we then get, okay, well, basically uh, what theta is equal to 2n pi plus 2 lots of 10 to minus 1 of minus 1 fifth. Uh, and then also we'd have another section coming from here that theta is also equal to 2n pi uh, plus 2 lots of, that's supposed to be a 2, doesn't look like a 2, I'll just try and fix that. Up. Okay, uh, two lots of tan to the minus one of one. Now, okay, so we have two streams uh, uh, for feeding into, if you like, the solutions to this uh, particular uh, trig equation from the T results. Now, uh, I'm just no now going to actually go through some of these solutions, and so we'll just have a quick look at evaluating some of these solutions. Okay, we can see that uh, obviously uh, T is equal to what? Minus one fifth or one. Now, while I'm on this, uh, we always would check, uh, you notice I've got there in the little uh, summary box up the top there, on the top right-hand corner, always check the solution theta equals pi. Okay, so when we actually, uh, we can either check at the beginning or at the end, uh, just to make sure that uh, we didn't miss that solution. Okay, because as you know, theta on 2, when theta is actually pi, would be undefined. And this is why we always have to watch this with the t results. We always have to, if you like, substitute in uh, the value, f well, the angle value of pi just to make sure that we didn't miss it. So we have the, these values for t at the moment. So, and you know that basically uh, tan uh, theta on 2 obviously is equal to minus 1 fifth. Uh, this gives us what theta on 2 equals uh, shift tan of minus 1 fifth. Okay, uh, and we also know that uh, tan theta on 2 is equal to 1. Uh, therefore, theta on 2 is equal to uh, shift 10 of 1. Now, uh, okay, so we know that's pi and 4, but uh, we're going to now write out the general solutions. Now, notice there is no domain restriction on this, so it just says solve this trig equation. Uh, and uh, basically, we're going to uh, use the T results, as you can see. Uh, the, the, the domain restriction being not, non existent, if you like basically means we have an infinite number of solutions. Uh, we then would then now drop into what's called the general solutions of these. And uh, so what are the general solutions for tan? Well, you might remember they were just quite simply uh, n pi plus the angle, so you always went forward. So basically our solutions, our general solutions would be uh, theta run 2, uh, we'll, we can double everything in a minute. Uh, so it would be going to be n pi plus this angle tan to the minus 1 of minus 1 fifth. Okay. Uh, and then also over here, uh, we have a, another section of solutions, which give us what? n pi, okay, plus 10 to the minus 1 of 1. Now, okay, these are our theta on 2 solutions, so we would then, then double everything. So we then get, okay, well, basically, uh, what? Theta is equal to 2n pi plus 2 lots of 10 to minus 1 of minus 1 fifth. Uh, and then also would have another section coming from here that theta is also equal to 2n pi uh, plus 2 lots of, that's supposed to be a 2, doesn't look like a 2, I'll just try and fix that up. Okay, uh, 2 lots of 10 to the minus 1 of 1. Now, okay, so we have two streams uh, uh, for feeding into, if you like, the solutions to this uh, particular 
uh, trig equation from the T results. Now, uh, I'm just now going to actually go through some of these solutions, and we'll just have a quick look at evaluating some of these solutions. Okay, I'm just going to evaluate these. I just put in n as 0, uh, and you'll end up getting uh, from this stream uh, minus 0 0.39. Okay, this is approximate. Okay, two decimal places. Uh, if n is 0 on this case, okay, you just end up getting inverse. Well, you can see here that'll be 2 times pi on 4, pi on 2. Okay, you end up getting uh, about 1.57. Okay, so it is approximately 1.57. Okay. All right, now say n is 1. Okay. Okay, uh, if n is 1 in this particular case, we end up getting what? Uh, 5.89. And in this case, uh, we end up getting theta is equal to, I think it's about 7.85. Okay. Two decimal places. Okay, so uh, let's have a look at n is two. Okay, I'll just do another one. N equals two. Okay, theta is approximately in this case uh, about twelve point one seven. Okay, one seven. One seven, and in this case, this is obviously n is one. N is two. Uh, theta is equal to. You just see here about 14.14. Okay. Now it is possible sometimes to actually combine these two general solutions into one general solution, but in this case uh, I think it's going to be very difficult. So we'll just have the two uh, two streams uh, giving us two sets of uh, individual solutions. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, just to finish up, uh, we now have to check whether actually. Uh, theta equals pi, or if you like, in this case, x equals pi is actually a solution to this uh, particular equation. So let's actually just go through that. Uh, it's quite important you do this because sometimes it does miss. I think in this case it's okay, but uh, let's go. So we should actually write down, check. Okay. In this case, x equals pi. Okay. All right, so how would we do that? Well, we just substitute in uh, x is equal to pi. Therefore, we have like 2 times the sine of pi. Uh, plus 3 times the cos of pi, and just see what that equals. And as you can see here, sine of pi is 0, 3 times the cos of pi is negative 1, so this equals actually, in this case, negative 3. Now, obviously, this does not equal 2, uh, therefore, x equals pi is not a solution. Uh, is not a solution. Uh, we actually have. Okay, so um, you can see here, just by looking at those general solutions, you can actually see that uh, we are not going to uh, basically have a pi value. We're going to have 2 pi, 2.5 pi. We can see there's some, there, there are some actually multiples of pi that are going to be there. But actually, x equals pi is actually not a solution. And it's always very wise to check this either at the beginning or at the end. Thank you for watching, and bye for now.